is go ahead and trim, you know, a nice little oh, section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, trim a little section out there. What's going on everybody? So today, what we're going to be doing is completely redoing our old fuel system. So if you saw my post, I got that Aeromotive uh, 1000. And well, you know what, let's just take a look. So this is what we got here. So this is a 15 gallon fuel cell, 10 AN lines. Uh, then we also have this 10 AN uh, feed lines. These are what's gonna feed all this stuff. And then right here is 8 AN return. And then this right here is a Y connection. So basically what we'll do is, you know, we'll mount the fuel cell <clears throat> and then it comes in. Yeah, so it, it comes in this way. This is the 100 micron uh, filter and then the 30 micron filter. And so they actually call for a 24, but I couldn't find a 24. And I couldn't find, I could find 10s, but they were, I just, they said 24. So I didn't want to go down to a 10 from a 24. So I went with 30, <clears throat> got a 30. And like I said, this is the whole set. It's got line, it's got fittings and everything up inside there. Uh, so I also do have some rubber isolators because one of the deaths of these things is vibration. So you always want to uh, make sure that they are got some sort of isolator so they're not vibrating like crazy. <clears throat> and then you'll notice that I'll be running 10 a.m. for a feed. So the 10 a.m. will come in and it's going to go all the way through here. It's going to go all the way up till it just about to the fuel rail and then just before the fuel rail i'll show you it'll go to this right here so this is a 10 an going to two 8 ans right here and so the two 8 ans will feed the uh, high flow fuel rails that you don't see here because they are on back order so i'm still waiting on those but i need the high flow ones and you also don't see the regulator uh that will go after the fuel rails which is weird to me because usually it's before it but that's the way aeromotive uh specifies they say it should be after the fuel rails and then it'll be at 8 a.m all the way back and it'll tie into one of those right there as a return those are 10 a.m as well so i'll have to i have a uh, 10 a.m to 8 a.m um a reducer or whatever so that's not gonna be a problem and I, who, uh, well, no, I'm not going to, I was about to say, who knows? I might go 10 a.m. all the way back, but no, I won't. I'm going to go with 8 a.m. all the way back. Uh, so, and then that right there will probably be the rollover valve right there. So that being said, uh, there are some things we need to talk about when mounting this here fuel cell before we get to it. Obviously, it's going to be going into the back. I'm going to have to drain all of the fuel out of here, and that fuel will not go back into this truck. Uh, the only fuel that's going to go back into here is if I can find some 93, but strange enough, uh, up here, it's really hard to find 93. It's like 91 is what I'll be finding more than likely. So I'll probably go with 91 in there, but it won't be 87 again. That all this will probably go into the Prius or one of the other vehicles that can actually run 87. Um, and yeah, then I got to lower it and I'm gonna try to do all this without taking the bed off because on the other side of that door is a bunch of snow and i can't raise that because the door is frozen to the ground so uh yeah we're going to attempt to do all of this with it still there which i did jack up the back end it is off the ground we should have access to everything um all right so got the fuel tank out i actually had to lift the bed up and off luckily with these s10s it's like six bolts that you got to take loose and then you take loose the tail lights and the, drop the wiring harness down and you don't even have to take the whole thing off oh yeah don't forget to take the the filler neck loose you just lift the bed up and set this part of the tires as long as they don't want to roll like you have e-brake and then set it basically midways and the rest of it sits on the bumper and you have full access to what you need you just need two people as long as you're strong enough to lift up the bed and the inside of the bed isn't full of stuff but me and jordan were able to lift it up and me and michael were also able to lift it up even with the tandem cover in place and that thing is heavy so you should be able to do it too um that being said that filler neck door is no longer being used for anything and we're going to i'm going to put that on 
marketplace or something like that because there's a lot of rusted stuff up here so somebody up here wants that i'm gonna get that out of here get that in use is it's still a fairly good tank and like i said somebody could absolutely use that up here uh but what we're gonna do is i'm gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna try to find a way to mount the pump which is over there with all that other stuff i gotta clean this place up um it's just so cold to do that you know I, I, this summer I, i'm gonna do it this summer but anyways uh we're gonna climb under there and see where we can mount this dang uh fuel pump it's a pretty pretty big assembly so we'll see where we can put it all right so i guess i'm just gonna mount it right here because i mean this basically i mean there's the transmission or well the transmission would be there and the drive shaft would come through here um i may build something to protect it but i mean i mean if i put a drive shaft loop in i think it'll be it'll be just fine i mean there's not a whole lot of space to put things anyways the freaking rear end is right there so i mean yeah there's not a whole lot of place to put it so looks like i'll go right there so i'm still waiting on i got some fittings coming in tomorrow because crazy enough this thing didn't come with any fittings on it that's fucking that, that's weird you know so uh i had to order some uh, luckily uh, these came with some and then i had well i thought i had some but i ended up welding those on to the the timing cover for the drain lines for the turbos so unfortunately i didn't have what i thought so i had to order you know one for either side no big deal so we'll bring the line in from the the uh tank which i can't mount to, it's too late right now so i can't cut um but we'll come in 90 into here it'll come through here and then 90 out of here and it'll go down that way and up to the engine obviously and then uh Obviously, the return will follow along with it, and then the return will just come up this way and then go up over to the where it needs to go for, you know, the return. Um, so when we're wiring this up, so we've already, you know, at this point, if you've been following along, we've already wired up a fuel pump. We have a relay for it. This thing draws about 17 amps, so we're good with the 40 amp relay that we have. Um, so what we want to do, though, with the wires... We want to run the biggest possible wire. Not too big though. Like, you know, if we can, if you want to run eight, that's fine. I wouldn't go any more than eight. But ten, we're definitely running a ten gauge all the way back here. Uh, the battery is not that far away anymore. It's just right here on the other side of this. But the relays are still up towards the front. They, they didn't change. So I still gotta run a wire all the way from up there down to over here. And so it'll, you know, obviously tie in here and then the ground will just go out and, you know. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mount the, the uh, uh, fuel cell in this general area. So what I'm actually planning on doing here, because if you'll notice, there's a bit of a, this bed was used as a work truck and it's very clear that it was. So like right here, it's hard to tell it, but it kind of dips. Um, and that's kind of where I want to put uh, the, the uh, uh fuel cell um so this is all you know obviously this all right here is going to be boxed in there's nothing i can do i have to be in this you know area and then obviously there's some supports right there so i can't be right there um but i have an idea for it uh if you we took out those valve springs from the ls that we talked about so i'm thinking that those valve springs will be able to help me uh for one work as isolators uh, so that it's not just riding down on the uh, the bed itself, because that will end up wearing a hole in it. <clears throat> so it'll just have the it'll sit on those springs, and they're pretty tough springs. So I don't think it's really gonna uh, affect it too much. I'm gonna tighten it down to where there it's just a little bit above the the, a bit, uh, the metal here, and so it'll it'll probably work out pretty good. Uh, like I said, we're gonna find out how it is when we put 15 gallons of fuel in it too, because that can be kind of heavy. Okay, so. Uh, let's see yeah see it's it's not touching it with the with the valve springs there uh but they're not compressed yet so the moment i start compressing them i feel like it's going to end up you know touching and so probably what we're going to have to do just to be sure is go ahead and trim you know a nice little oh, section yeah. <laughs> uh, trim a little section out there and uh that way we can run the lines out i mean it's 
Yeah, we'll we'll have to do some measuring here real quick. But let's let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and mark this. Actually, all right. So, I mean, the lines are pretty big, so we want to have enough space just in case. So I'm thinking like back here. You know, roughly. We'll we'll put a straight edge on that. But uh, and I mean, doesn't have to be much. Doesn't have to be much wider than what we have here. So, you know, boom. I'm just kind of... I'm thinking like right there. Yeah. And then we'll have to measure. I'll get a tape measure out and measure up inside there. See what we got. So we, we want it to be accurate at least. I couldn't seem to line it up any better with these things. So I just said, screw it. I'm just, dude, that one's sitting on a rail. That one's not. It was like, screw it. Whatever. Let's do this. Okay. So there we go. Nice and square. And we're just going to go ahead and cut that little hole out. That way the... The fuel cell has somewhere to, to the, the little sump, like I said. Uh, but first, we need to make sure there's nothing under there. Look at what I have to deal with, though. So that's all ice. So we, we get a bunch of snow, you know, and you shovel what you can. And then we have a 43 degree weather day, and it thaws a lot of it. And then it, the night that, that, that night, it freezes, and it just becomes an icy mess. Okay. So it doesn't look like we have anything in the way there. Uh, it's just behind that bracket right there with the uh, spare tire holder. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, cut it. Will make sure. Yeah, that's just behind that. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So check it out. Got the hole. So little tech tip. Uh, you can take a little bit of hose, like a little vacuum hose, and you can cut it safely down the one side of it, and you can use it to just kind of protect things. And you know, if your hands are going in there, whatnot. And so yeah. Even after you clean it, the metal can still be sharp, you know. So this right here uh, prevents that. So let's go ahead. We got still got to mount the the uh, the fuel cell, and we got to drill some holes. So when it comes to the, the holes, um, actually, I was thinking about drilling holes and mounting uh, nuts on the other side. But Michael was actually saying, well, why don't we, you know, just put um, bolts through, and then ha just have like a stud sticking up, basically. Um, so, you know, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to measure the size of the hole that we have on there and see how big of a bolt we can go with. And so we're going to, then we're going to go get some grade A hardware and mount her up. To mount it up, as you can see, that was my idea with the, with the springs. Just to, I mean, it doesn't give it much, but as you can see, it moves just enough. And it's still got some compression and some space there. Um, yeah, I think it's going to work out great. And I'm pretty sure that these 90s are going to fit in this area. They're, they're pretty large, but... I only need one. I'm only going to be coming out of this one right here. This one's going to stay nice and capped. We don't have to worry about that for right now. But later on down the line, you never know. We're on one fuel pump for each fuel rail. <laughs> but uh, as of right now, yeah, like I said, we're just going to be worried about the one fitting. Uh, let's see. All right, so this is where we're at. So you got the line coming out of right there. And crazy enough, we had just enough 8 a.m. For the return uh but it comes out of there and then it comes like i said it comes through right here it goes right here goes through goes down and then it continues on down that way up into the y fitting and then it splits off we're gonna go up there though uh and then as you can see the return line so i do have some clamps that are going to be used to hold the the 10a in line but as you can see it comes up to this here to that y fitting right there and then it splits off and we're still waiting on the fuel rail okay so the next thing we got to do is run power so that's not gonna be too hard uh but i do have to tie in get back into here and redo that pin to that one that runs down that way all right, so uh, when it comes to the wiring on this thing, one of the issues that people have is that they don't run a big enough wire. And it actually states that you want to run about, a, at the minimum, a 10-gauge wire. Uh, so what we have right here is a 10-gauge uh, that runs all the way uh, up to the 40-amp relay that is in the engine compartment. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, he said, it, nice 10-gauge wire. And then we have a 10-gauge coming off of right here, and it runs directly up to the negative side of the battery. That way it is is nice and perfect. And as you saw, we have the 10 AN, you know. So we wanna make sure that this pump, since it's so expensive, it doesn't burn out. So that's the reason why we're going to all these extremes with with everything. That way, um, yeah, we don't we don't want any issues. It's, it's not something that we wanna to have to replace 
right away. Uh, and unfortunately, with this return line, uh, I need uh, of 90 for up top up there, and then I need a 90 for over there at the regulator. But I don't even have the regulator anyways. Um, I'm still waiting on that and the fuel rail. So um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much left to this thing now that now that this is all wired up and everything like that. Uh, the the fun time comes once we get everything installed and we get to like fire everything up for the first time. And man, I can't wait. This pump is gonna be, this one right here, is, I've heard this is very loud. And that's one of the reasons why it's on rubber isolators so that the vibrations, you know, from it doing it, it won't, that's, that was another issue, it was vibrations. So I still gotta run the brackets from here to, right, well, from here to there. I'm not gonna run to the cab, that would be, that would be dumb. So I'm gonna run from here to up here probably, or to here or something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some brackets, but, I'm not too concerned right now. It's not driving down the road. It's not running. Everything is plumbed and ready to go.